the goal in scalability is to develop a process in small scale and to achieve similar performance in large scale. That's our goal. And I have written down here the question, when do we have scale up problem? Imagine I design a production process in five liter bioreactor and go to 10,000 liter bioreactor. If the cell concentration is not comparable in both scales, as soon as the product concentration is comparable, no one cares actually. Or as soon as the product concentration is comparable or higher than the small scale, even in that case, no one cares. If the glucose profile between five liter and 10,000 liter is different, no one cares also, as long as the product concentration is fine. <laughs> in terms of industrial manufacturing, we focus on product. However, when we evaluate this issue in academic sense, actually we should take every parameter into account to see the comparability. How is the cell viability? How is the cell concentration, product formation, metabolite utilization, etc.? The title. The title, yes. <laughs> in many cases, what I have seen is the productivity was different. The product quality that it changed, I have never seen, but it can happen, of course. So I am glad that we also get interaction. I need also your input. So um, what do we uh, do to avoid scale-up problems? The question. I have uh, written down an answer from my point of view. Um, to optimize the physical conditions of the bioreactors in small and large scale first, and then to work with that optimized conditions in the future. That should be actually the goal. That means if we build a new facility, we should characterize the bioreactors, 10,000 liter and five liter bioreactors. We should measure all these characteristic physical uh, parameters like KLA, uh, energy input, tip speed, steering rate, whatever. All these physical engineering parameters. This characterization should be done. I think many of the companies have done this work also. Um, if someone is more or less beginner in this area, they can also get a lot of support from the engineering companies, from the bioreactor suppliers, from consultants, from special small companies, develop special software to characterize the bioreactors. Uh, with other words, the characterization of bioreactors in, uh, in uh, terms of physical conditions, the know-how is there. It is not something specific. It is also not something patented. You can buy it for actually very little money. However, many experienced companies have done this characterization and still scale up is an issue. And that is maybe also the reason why so many people sit here to discuss the scalability. What that means, actually? There are several answers what that means. And um, one of them, maybe the, our characterization is not perfect. And another answer could be, maybe we are putting on wrong uh, parameter. Maybe we are thinking that by characterizing the physical conditions of bioreactor, we can solve the scalability issues. Maybe that is a uh, uh, wrong decision, the wrong idea. I don't know. Now I have prepared here case studies. Um, imagine in a facility, the physical conditions of a small and large scale bioreactors are harmonized. I think everyone do it. Everyone who invests in a big facility, they do this work. And that is also a work which can take a couple of weeks or months and then it is finished. All the data are uh, in, in, uh, in books and in, in computers and you can use it. Thereafter, the company transfers five production processes from small scale into large scale. After the characterization, we know when I steer my bioreactor, 5-liter bioreactor with 80 RPM, 
how to steer the 10,000 liter bioreactor. I know it because I have done this characterization before. Maybe I have to steer with 25 RPM. And three of these five processes we are okay. Okay means TITA is comparable, product quality is comparable, and two of them are not okay. That means TITA is or product quality is not comparable. What should we do? Where is the problem hidden? We have done the characterization already. What should we do then? Why do we have two processes which run smoothly and uh, three processes which run smoothly and two of them not? There are actually two options. One of them is physical conditions of bioreactor is still not okay. That means even though we have invested their work, money, and characterized all these physical conditions, maybe it is still not optimized. But if it is not optimized, why these three processes were okay? Another option is two processes are fragile. In this case, sometimes we use the terminology, the, the process is not scalable, or the process is maybe scalable but fragile. That means it is not uh, um, uh, robust. Now, it is very important to differentiate between these two options, and that goes to the definition of the problem. Depending on the answer, we might do totally different experiments. When I believe that the two processes are fragile, I do process optimization again. When I believe that physical conditions are not optimal, then I hire a consultant, buy additional software, and try to optimize all these KLA and so on, and try to run the bioreactor in a different modus. That are totally different experiments. Therefore, it is important to make the, de the definition of the problem uh, right. I believe in many inst instances, the, problem, uh, the process itself is the problem, not the physical conditions of the bioreactors. And um, also, these case studies, if I think that, that, that gives a realistic picture. Maybe it is not three to two, maybe it is four to one or two to three, but it happens to more or less every company today that they have a scalability issue. That means one process is easily scalable, the other one not. In this case, at Selka in our company, we are discussing about the process, not anymore about energy input or tip speed. Now, the so to the solution of the problem, I have prepared the question that is more or less a repeat of the uh, statement. How shall we solve the scalability problem of, this, of those uh, not scalable processes? One option, by adjusting the physical conditions of the bioreactor. That means steer a bit slowly or higher sparge more oxygen or sparge more gas or whatever, nitrogen, whatever. By redesigning the process, that means when we believe the physical conditions are already optimal, and when I believe that my process is fragile, then I should re-engineer the process. And third, designing a scalable process at the beginning. Of course, that is the best solution in order to lose time and money here, thereafter by redesigning, maybe I should design from the beginning the right process which is scalable. That is more or less the, the summary or introduction to the topic, uh, what I am saying today, the key message. Uh, the physical conditions of most of the, of the bioreactors are optimized, and if it is not optimized to get the know-how, uh, the, the, the tools are easy in the market. However, we don't speak enough about process design. How should we design the process which is easily scalable? The summary of the introduction is shown here uh, in a uh, visual way. We have a scalability problem. We have tools, downscale models. 10,000 liter is mimicked in five liter. 
we can buy software, we can hire consultants to solve this problem. And these tools I call physical conditions. There is another group of tools which I call process tools. That is the vector, the cell line, the media, and process. How we should integrate these modules to each other so that we don't have scalability problem. Now the difference between two modules is here, I focus on the appearance, on the appearance of the problem. That means I have a scalability problem and I am trying to solve this problem by hiring a consultant. My problem is maybe related to the cell line. That is extremely fragile cell line. Therefore, I have a scalability problem and therefore I am hiring a consultant. However, I believe here we focus on the reason of the problem. And if we do it right at the beginning here, we would avoid the problem. And that is the philosophy by Selka, to make processes which are scalable, not to have problems here so that we don't need this. We need that only once when the facility is designed but not by every process, we have to adjust it. Let's start with vector. When we design a production process, which should be scalable, I should avoid product induction in, in production fermenter. And there are some publications that you can grow the cells to a certain number and then add something into the bioreactor at a certain day, for example at day five, to induce the product formation. But why should I add something? That in, uh, increases the complexity and the risk. Why should I not implement a promoter which uh, express my gene of interest constitutively all the time? Genetic stability in selection pressure free medium. Now, um, I will make a picture between small scale and large scale. What that means is genetic stability. We have a shake flask. Here we have the inoculum cells. We develop the process in five liter bioreactor. We take the inoculum cells from there and go to five liter. Normally, we have here selection pressure, for example, MTX. We transfer the inoculum cells there and run here production bioreactor in one step. When we go and scale up to 10,000 liter bioreactor, we have shake flask. We have um, maybe 8 liter bioreactor or 10 liter bioreactor. I make it easier. We have... Um, 80 liter bioreactor, we have 400 liter, we have 2,000 liter, and we have 15,000 liter production bioreactor. Normally in these N minus one, two, three, four steps, we don't apply MTX. Here, we transfer cells which contain already MTX. However, there it is MTX free. If we have a cell line which is unstable or has tendency to instability in an MTX free medium, we have one, two, three, four passages until we inoculate the production bioreactor. What happens here? And maybe the cell line loses its uh, production abilities and then we inoculate here. And if we get here, for example, 1.5 gram per liter product, and we develop in small scale two gram per liter, and then we discuss with management about uh, scalability. We discuss about KLA. We should, I mean, our problem is maybe related on genetic stability. That means in vector, I would invest energy so that cell line is stable also without uh, selection pressure. 